Well, I'm upset because uh, I didn't realize that um, my mic was off the entire time. <laughs> so here's a take two of what it is. Uh, so real quick, just let y'all know. Real quick, my name is Sackle Hunter. Welcome. I know I just ate. I'm sorry I'm burping a lot. But welcome to the video. Today, uh, we are talking about more about Overwatch. Mainly because uh, the director of Overwatch, Aaron Keller, the game director of it, uh, has come forth with pretty much a response to uh, everybody saying that PvE is dead. It's gone. It's just it's, it's not there. Um, so we're going to be reading through that real quick today. So real quick, let me just pop it up here. All right, that is the wrong fucking one. There you go. So we're going to be reading all this. Uh, honestly, you guys want to skip through it to just like by end opinions we'll do that but i'm going to be going through pretty much each paragraph and just go through it like that so first off uh hey all it's been an emotional week in the world of overwatch a few days ago we talked about our change to in approach to pve in overwatch 2 and released a high level roadmap for the year that's not a high level roadmap we're really excited for everything will be launching soon, but uh, much of the discussion this week has been about how we're canceling PvE outright, which isn't accurate, so I want to take some time to discuss some of that with you here. Uh, he, he, he's missing the point. <laughs> it's not so much that, it's not that we're saying PvE isn't coming, it's so much that the PvE that we have all wanted, the PvE that we were promised, and the PvE that everybody was hoping to get, is being downgraded to the PvE that we've gotten for the beginning, or the whole beginning of time with Overwatch, which comes from the archive events. So in other words, yes, PvE for Overwatch 2, the PvE that we got, were promised, is just fucking cancelled. That's what we mean. If you are failing to understand that, Aaron, I don't know how to help you. Keep going. Uh, when we announced Overwatch 2 in 2019, the idea of the game was centered around the PvP game we released last October and on the PvE side, story missions and hero missions. Uh, story missions focus on fast-paced co-op gameplay as well as story, cinematics, and cutscenes that expand the world of Overwatch. Uh, story missions tell a linear narrative about the heroes of Overwatch reuniting and battling the new the no sector threat, uh, pushing the story of Overwatch forward for the first time since our original game released. These missions take place on huge maps with new enemies, new cinematics. We'll begin to release them in Season 6. The work done here is amazing. Leaps and bounds above what we built for PvE previously in our game. And I can't wait for our players to get their hands on them. We'll be sharing more details there in the coming weeks. This shit sounds like fucking gaslighting. <laughs> I don't know. It just doesn't, like, how could you be this out of touch with the community? We don't care about this stuff. Like, yes, you guys are going to release it, but y'all guys are going to release it so fucking slow that by the time it actually, like, gives a shit, we're going to have to watch videos all the way back to, like, when the shit started just to catch up on what the fuck we missed. Because, honestly, I'll guarantee you, I'm going to forget some shit. I've done it with fucking Destiny. I've forgotten a lot of shit that happened in Destiny to where I have to go back, watch a video, and be like, oh, yeah, that happened. That shit just happens. And for Overwatch, the story, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. We're just going to keep going in it. We'll just. It's just, I don't feel like it's going to work with this drip feed shit. And I don't feel like he understands that. Um, we're just going to, I'm going to keep reading here. Uh, I'll stop with something pisses me off because this is, that's as far as I went. Uh, this is all new to me. So heads up here. Uh, hero missions, or hero mode, on the other hand, uh, encompassed an in-development game mode that allows players to upgrade individual heroes uh, through talent trees, providing a deeply replayable version of PvE in Overwatch 2. Uh, it was really an exciting concept, something that not only resonated with players, but that the team was passionate about and really dedicated to. This is the mode we're no longer moving forward with. You just said <laughs> y'all were dedicated to it. Y'all were passionate about it. And now y'all just threw it away. Like, that, that doesn't scream passionate and dedicated. It screams, I'm bored. I'm tired of working on it. I don't want to work on it. We haven't touched it in like four years. I don't want to fucking look at it. That's what it look. That's what it sounds like. Okay. Let's keep going. Uh, to give you some context for this change... Uh, I like to talk about the past and the origins of Team 4. Okay. 
The Overwatch team was founded in the wake of canceled game at Blizzard called Project Titan. Uh, that game had many facets, but at its heart, it was an FPS MMO. The Overwatch team, especially at its inception, considered itself an MMO development team. What? MMO. I'm trying to remember what MMO means. Am I stupid? What does MMO mean? Let me search uh, FPS MMO because that's that's. Isn't that like what uh, Team Fortress Two is? Hold on. MMO games. What does that mean? See, because it says MMO RPG. That's all I get. That's why I was confused. I was like, "What the fuck?" Multiplayer online. No, yeah, it still says multiplayer online role playing. I guess technically it's supposed to be multiplayer. My oh, massively multiplayer. Gotcha. So that makes sense. Massively, yeah, that's that's understandable. That's why I was like, what? Because <laughs> every time I heard MMO, I think of like WoW and shit. That's why I'm like, what? Um, okay. The Overwatch team, especially at its inception, considered itself an MMO development team. As we transitioned away from the original concept and started creating Overwatch, we included plans to one day return to that scope. What? What do you mean? We had a crawl, walk, run plan. Overwatch was the crawl, a dedicated version for, of PvE was the walk, and an MMO was the run. It was built into the DNA of the team early on, and some of us considered the final game a true realization of the original vision of Project Titan. What? What, what does this have to do with anything? When we launched Overwatch in 2016, we quickly started talking about what that next iteration could be looking back at the moment it's now obvious that we weren't as focused as we should have been on a game that was a runaway hit instead we stayed focused on a plan that was years old work began on the pve portion of the game and we steadily continue shifting more and more of the team to work on those features i fucking don't believe you because here's the thing the way you just said it in 2016 that means y'all guys have been working on pve and polishing it since 2016 it has taken y'all seven years to work on this shit that is what that sounds like am i reading it wrong or that's how it sounds like because that's how it sounds like when we launched overwatch 2016 we quickly started talking about the what's the next iteration could be. Looking big at the moment, it's now obvious that we weren't as focused as we should have been on the game that was a runaway hit. Instead, we stayed focused on a plan that was years old. Work began on the PvE portion of the game. The way he phrased it, the way he worded it, sounds like your guys have been working on this shit either since 2017 or 2016. Which means... Y'all have done nothing for over seven fucking years for the PvE. If this was a plan all the way back in 2016 and nothing has been done, what the fuck? Okay, let's, let's go. Let's continue. Things rarely go as planned in game development. We struggled to find our footing with the hero mission experience early on. Scope grew. We were trying to do too many things at once and we lost focus. So you're saying that literally y'all tried to multitask and y'all fucked up instead of working on one hero at a time. Don't get me wrong. I'm pretty sure that would take a long ass fucking time to work on each hero at a time. But let's be real here. Four fucking years. If anything, one hero could probably take maybe... Ugh. And no, I'm not a game developer, so I could be wrong on this. But I want to say maybe seven months. Okay, so yeah, yes, I could see where it would be a problem. Because if it does take seven months, and that's me just spitballing... Then yes, it could be a problem. But the thing is, y'all guys had a lot of characters already done. Y'all guys already had May. Y'all had Tracer. Y'all had Reinhardt. Y'all had Lucio. Y'all guys already had characters already set up. Y'all are already ahead. So that's why that doesn't really make sense either. And the reason I say these guys were set up is because they already had gameplay. Yeah, those cinematics and everything, that's technically gameplay. 
Am I wrong? I mean, that's what got everybody excited. Hell, even Genji was in there. And Genji wasn't even in the fucking, like, demo. There was a lot of ability shown and worked on, which means there were things that could have been worked on. Either way, let's keep on going into it. Uh, let's see. So, things really go as planned. The hero missions experience early on. Scope grew. We are trying to... Okay, yeah. The team built some really great things, including hero talents, new enemy units, and early versions of missions. But we were never able to bring together all of the elements needed to ship a polished, cohesive experience. Okay. Uh, we had an exciting but gargantuan vision, and we were continuously pulling resources away from the live game in an attempt to realize it. Okay. And... I can't help but look back on our original ambition for Overwatch and feel like we used the slogan of crawl, walk, run to continue to march forward with a strategy that just wasn't working. So here's the thing. I feel like crawl, I feel like that phrase was made by Jeff. And then he just said, nah, it's not working. I'm too lazy. That's how this sounds. Okay, we had announced something audacious. Our players had high expectations for it, but we no longer felt like we could deliver it. We needed to make an incredibly difficult decision, one we knew would disappoint our players. The team and everyone looking forward to hero missions. The Overwatch team understands this deeply. This represented years of work and emotional investment. They are wonderful, incredible, talented people and are truly, and truly, have a passion for our game and they work. They do. And you know what? I can give them that because I was losing faith in Overwatch and the cuticle cinematic fucking blew my mind. It fucking made me cry. And it shows that people do actually care. And I mean, it's one thing I'll give them, but this still sounds like a shit show. I'm sorry. Like, yes, I know y'all guys gave a shit about it. And I get that y'all's time and investment is going to shit. But the thing is, y'all really fucked up here. Y'all really, really fucked up here. Four years. Well, technically, seven years. <laughs> I'm not doing shit. No, <laughs> on. Whatever. Uh, lastly, people have wondered why this announcement came at this time. After Overwatch 2 had launched, we started refining our plans to future seasons. As those plans grew, we tried to find ways to make all of our ambitions fit together in a plan that we believed in. That's a lie. That's a fucking lie. There's a game article with GameSpot that literally said they fucking knew at the very beginning they were not going to deliver. That's a fucking lie. We couldn't, and we also knew that we couldn't go back to pulling people away from the live game in service of that original vision again. So, we made the difficult decision to cut hero missions and started planning for the future. You fucked up. You fucked up. That's all I will say on that. Y'all guys fucked up. Uh, from there, we need to update the vision for the game, gain confidence in our new direction, and roll out the changes to the team. The decision was the start of a long process, not the final piece of it. Nope. That's terrible. I hate this. This has been hard for us, but as the director of this project, I have to do my best to make decisions that put the game and the community first. Uh-huh. Yeah. Yeah. Doesn't seem like it puts the game and the community first. It feels like it puts y'all's guys wanting to just chill and lay back and all that. That, that's what it sounds like. It doesn't sound like you guys gave a shit. It doesn't sound like you guys ever gave a shit. It sounds like you guys just wanted to fucking just chill. And that's it. Whatever. Um, even when those directions were disappointing in this case, I had trouble pivoting away from the vision that just wasn't working. And for that, I would like to apologize to our players and to our team. I'm sorry. How come you couldn't say this in a video? Jeff would have. Jeff always did. I'm not Jeff. Yeah, we can fucking see. Okay. 
We have focused our efforts and passion into making the game an ever-evolving experience. We are still committed to building many of the elements we talked about at BlizzCon 2019, including the story missions that delve into the next chapter of the Overwatch universe, new types of co-op content we haven't yet shared, and new stories that we're planning to tell both in and out of the game. Stop. We don't need it out of the game. I'm sorry. I don't like the fact that y'all guys released fucking comics and shit when we don't fucking need it. Just give it all into the game. We don't need the out of the game shit. I'm sorry, because that shit did always piss me off. I had to download a full fucking book just to find out what the fuck Baptiste's story was. Come on. And I still have it downloaded, by the way. We're excited about this direction, and we can't wait for you to finally get to experience what we've been building. Overwatch was born from the ashes of Project Titan. It was a moment of metamorphosis for the team and the project, and something beautiful came out of it. This is another moment of change, and the future of Overwatch will be born out of it. <laughs> yeah, sure. Uh, real quick, let's see. What's the comments? <laughs> let's check the comments. What's the comments for it? I'm curious. <laughs> uh, let's see the comments on it. Uh, three replies. Okay. Yep. Uh, these story missions are probably going to be paid for the battle pass. They will probably be fun for about 30-45 minutes, just like all other events, including the latest Star Watch, that we will have to wait nine weeks for more PvE content in the new battle pass. <sighs> I am angry. I was looking forward to lots of replayable content. I waited for years, and you guys are making more money than ever with battle passes and shop content. You can't even hire more people to work on the game if you are having trouble getting things done. Why are you giving your giving you money for what are we giving you money for where is the money going the game is just constant promises and under delivering it's like a bad relationship and your pr speaks is getting really annoying i know story missions focus on fast-paced co-op da, 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 story missions yeah so basically it's just archives remember when we used to get these in overwatch one i sure do i also remember these were canceled so the devs could work on overwatch 2 pve Thank you. Oh, someone's actually okay with this. I'll admit the soft and the blow. However, there's some key permission we still need to still need, so I'll be looking forward to the next update about PvE. I'll probably never completely quit Overwatch because I love the gameplay, but as someone who has spent a significant amount of money on Overwatch 1 and 2, I am very unlikely to continue paying anything for this game, and that includes the future battle passes. I'm the type of player who enjoys role-playing more than showing off my collectibles to anyone. I'm a solo player. I haven't had consistent group to play Overwatch with since the early competitive seasons 2 and 4. I never installed Overwatch 1, but it got to the point where I no longer played comp and I would play a few matches every few months, sometimes less. PvE excited me like crazy. Because I wanted to immerse myself in the Overwatch world, I was already picturing myself playing story missions with certain skins, voice lines, and then replaying with the same heroes but different personas, different skins, voice lines, z modes, etc. I do that lightly with multiplayer, but it just isn't satisfying anymore since there's no storyline. Just one match to the next. What concerns me the most about this update that it seems the hero missions were the highly repayable portion of the PvE, and the story missions, while exciting, seem kinda one and done, like the current and former PvE option we've had. Once we accomplish these missions and learn the story, we will still have reason to play them. Will we still have reason to play them? Yeah, I don't know. Are the enemies always going to spawn in the same places? Are we playing these with the same heroes each time? Is the only difference between the playthrough going to be the difficulty option? Are we going to have different potential enemies spawning in different places with different tactics? Will there be multiple ways to accomplish the missions? Can we use different team compositions to keep things fresh each time? All of these questions I like answers to. But there are two questions that matter to me the most personally. Can we use any skin or customization options that we possess for hero missions? Probably, right? I mean, it'd be crazy if we couldn't consider how much people have done to collect them. And then my most important question is, are story missions permanent additions to the game or limited time? This is my biggest deciding factor at this point. I like this guy. I fucking like this guy. 
He has a fair point. And also he talks about Destiny at the bottom. Oh, fuck. If there are permanent additions, then the game will continue to fill out over time, and it may eventually resemble the campaign many of us thought we'd eventually get. To be clear, I understand that poses a problem for the co-op matchmaking, but I'd rather it always be there, and I have to play with AI sometimes than if it's limited time. Honestly, if story missions are temporary, that'll be my breaking point. No matter how extravagant they are, they'll just be a PvE event. And that's not worth it for me. Uh, sure, I'll play them if they're available outside the Battle Pass, but I'll be a true casual at that point. I'll only play when the mood strikes as opposed to being committed. And if I miss an event and the story moves on, or the story moves on to the next chapter, I may never play them again since I already fell behind looking at Destiny. Or I'll just watch clips from streamers online if I'm curious. I don't need to play myself at that point if I can't play in the way I want to. This man had some very fair points. Like, he had some good fucking questions. That is actually really good shit. Who was this? Who was this guy? Aster. Aster. Holy crap, man. He had some good shit. I'm sorry for, like, pulling up your comment, but no lie. You had some very good points and very good questions. Um... God, I, I really hope that they do stay, but the way that he made it sound, it doesn't sound like it. It really doesn't sound like it. Is there more comments? No, that's about it. That's that's a very good one. That is a very good comment right there, because it has very good questions and everything. That's That was good. So, I probably didn't read the thing right, because I don't see anybody else talking about the thing where they said... From 2016, that's when they technically started on the PvE, from what that sounded like to me. I didn't see anybody else talking about that. Um, if that's not true, good. Because that means it's not as bad as it may sound. <laughs> but um, honestly, it it's this is... It's not helping anyone understand. It just sounds like excuses. Like, that, that's all it sounds like. Not even excuses. It just sounds like he wants to explain just so then people won't leave. That that's what it sounds like. But then also, so it sounds like okay, it sounds like a couple things. So one, it sounds like he's apologizing just so then people don't leave the game and then the game dies. Two, he's trying to, I guess, cancel the whole idea of oh they canceled pve no no no. we're saying they canceled pve because technically that's what y'all did pve was supposed to be completely different in overwatch 2 so yes y'all canceled pve in overwatch 2 and we are getting pve in overwatch 1 so in that technicality y'all did cancel pve for overwatch 2 and we're just getting the overwatch 1 one so yeah i mean that that's that's still cancellation I don't know where he thought that wasn't, but it was. Um, but that's that's all it sounds like. It just sounds like he tried to come up with excuses and explain why they did that. So then people will be like, oh, well, I can't leave the game now. And then two would be the whole like trying to make everyone be like, oh, it, it's coming, guys. PvE is coming. Oh, we promised you PvE in Overwatch 2. It's coming. Yeah, it's coming, but it's still Overwatch 1. It's not Overwatch 2. Overwatch 2 had a skill tree. Overwatch 2 had player progression. Overwatch 2 had, like, customization of the heroes and all that stuff. This Overwatch is Overwatch 1. Overwatch 2 does not need to exist. If this is the case, change the fucking title. Can we go into that? Can we ask them to, like, change the title of Overwatch 2 back to Overwatch and actually give us all our play data back? Oh, no, we can't because it all got deleted. Like, you can't look back all the way to where, like, where I started, which I think I started in season, I think, 16, if I remember correctly, of the whole seasons. I don't remember where it was at at that time, but I can't look back at it now. Nobody can. They, nobody can look back at their seasons unless it's the last two seasons of Overwatch 1. That's all you can look at. That's it. And it's like, what the fuck? But yeah, um, no, but honestly, I still think... Um, I think I'm still going to leave the game after Pokemon Watcher. Then I'll probably just do what Aster said, too, to where he says that he's just going to be a casual player to play it every now and then, and that's about it. I think I'm probably going to do the same thing, too. Um, I'm not going to spend money on it. 
I think the last thing I will spend money on, and I will admit this, I will do this because if I'm going to be casual on this shit, I'm going to look fly as casual. And then I think I'm just going to get the Moira skin uh, from the Overwatch League. Because the Overwatch League one, that that is her best skin. And that's why I'm so upset right now because I got to spend money on that because I love that skin. So I know I'll still play it. So I will still be playing Overwatch. It's just not something I'm going to be spending a lot of money on. I'm not going to be spending on fucking battle passes. I'm just going to be playing for the free hero and that's about it. Um, That's about, yeah. I'm, I'm not going to give a shit about it because personally, I feel like I wasted my money on the battle passes only because I don't really get anything and I don't use anything in it. Like I, get, I got sprays. I got emblems. I got souvenirs that I don't fucking use. They're all just fucking pointless. Uh, either way, um, that's it for me. Thank you guys for watching, whether it was live recorded or either or. Uh, again, I said my stream one. Thank you guys for watching. Like, subscribe, share this video with you guys, friends, you guys enjoyed. Um, tell me what you guys think about the whole thing. Maybe, maybe this shit could be good. I don't know. But yeah, that's it for me, guys. Peace out. Take care. Have a great night.